You are listening to Win on KZKO. Check them out every Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Only on KZKO The Vibe. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself for the Win Show on KZKO. Take part with the cast by sending your suggestions for each segment throughout the week or during the show by hitting them up on Facebook at World Improv Network, Twitter at World Improv Net, or the Win KZKO blog. Now, enjoy the show. It's local. It's global. You are listening to Win World Local News. Win World Local News with Potter Smith. Our top story today is brought to us by Win Facebook contributor Francisco of Tampa, Florida. In a class action lawsuit in the United States of America, a U.S. court awarded 2,000 current and former exotic dancers of Rick's Cabaret in New York, New York, with a $10 million judgment. To strip the details of this story, let's go live to win senior legal analyst Johnny Law in Manhattan in a courthouse in New York, who is standing by panties in hand. Uh, Johnny? Yeah, uh, thank you, Potter. I'm out here uh, in front of the courthouse where really everyone uh, everyone is super happy. There's, uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, dancers running around. They got, they got dollar bills just coming out of everywhere. Uh, the court paid them in ones at the end of the settlement, just right in the room there. Uh, that was a, a mandate of how the settlement was to be made. And... Uh, yeah, it really, it's, uh, I've never seen a, a happier, a happier scene with this many naked people. Usually there's a lot more sadness when these, when this many strippers are in the room. But, uh, not today. Not today, Potter. And, um, I have with me here right now, actually, uh, the, one of the, uh, lead plaintiffs, uh, Miss Destiny. Uh, now, uh, Miss Destiny, uh, you hear, you, you just flush with ones. And uh, how? Tell me how you're feeling. Oh hell yeah! I am flush with ones, and I'm so happy. I'm making a ray right up here in this courtroom right now. I've been throwing them off the the veranda. My one dollars that they gave me, they gave me a forty seven thousand dollars in ones. The judge did. I just made make the rain. I've been even sticking them to my body like crepe hair, and almost like little pasties that I want to have some customers eat right off of me. Now I I gotta say I wouldn't have expected you. Someone who has been rained upon so much in her life to be the one now making it rain. Well, you know what they say about all that. Yeah, you know you got those shoes on the other foot. Yeah, <laughs> who's laughing now, Rick? Yeah, I can make some rain too. And ain't nobody going to get all this money unless I give it to them. And that's why I'm being so liberal and dispensing it all over the place. Now, uh, Miss Destiny, are you? Uh, do, do you intend to continue with your dancing career? Oh, yeah, this is just motivating me to, to try to become a better dancer. I want to be a dancer that's of world caliber, and the only way to do that is to put in your years of work and experience. You just can't go down a fourth-story stripper pole, upside down, spinning, doing pull-up chin-ups, and even doing some cartwheels unless you put in the work. Uh, now, that's, uh, I, I personally, I have seen your show several times, and, uh, I'm quite impressed. You have, uh, an incredible leg strength, I gotta say. Well, back in college, yeah, I used to play a running back. Matter of fact, I played the fullback position at mm. Grambling State University. So I was you a... had full and running back at the time. Oh, huh? yeah, I uh-huh. did. That's right. That's right. And boy, I had some powerful legs for that man on the locker room. Mm. Well, uh, Miss Destiny, thank you for your time. Uh, Potter, as you can hear, uh, you know, the, the strippers, they're still, they're not giving up their day jobs, but they are incredibly happy. Well, thank you, Johnny. That's very interesting. I'd like to see that rain of ones in the courtroom and in the courthouse there in Manhattan. Boy, I bet you'll see it on YouTube shortly. Well, our next story brings us to, uh, to us by Facebook contributor Jordy of London, England. A female veterinarian from the U.S. state of Oregon ended up strict searched and jailed within a women's prison in the independent island nation of Timor-Leste next to Indonesia after she got into the wrong taxi cab. To prod the story inside and out, let's go live to Senior Win International Reporter Pol Pot outside the women's prison in Timor Lest with this breaking story. Oh, Pol Pot! Uh, hello! Yes, I am 
here outside the prison and I am here with uh, uh, the, the chief of security of the prison, uh, Mr. Tian Miao. Uh, sir, how are you, uh, how are you, uh, taking the accusations that, uh, this woman was unlawfully strip searched? Well, um, frankly, we're, uh, upset that, uh, at the lack of trust that the international press and law community has in, in our methods and our rules. Uh, we are very strict, and we make sure that every single person who gets into the wrong cab is strip-searched. Do you think maybe that the rigidity of your rules are uh, outrageous? Uh, no, no. Uh, and, and I'm insulted that you would even ask such a thing. That Do is you... my job as a journalist, sir. Well, that may be. But you're not in the front lines. You're not in prisons. Do you know what people can hide inside their bodies? I'm hiding a few things inside my body right now. Exactly. And how many of those are dangerous and could kill people? Zero. Ah. Could, a, could a Rubik's Cube kill somebody? Are you kidding me? We had three Rubik's Cubes death. Three Rubik's Cubes deaths. I don't know where the well, plural I, goes on that. It's, but, well, Rubik's was the name of the guy that made the thing. And we had three of them, so it was Rubik's, Rubik's Cubes, Cubes Deaths. De Rubik's Cube, Cube Deaths, I think. Rubik's Cube. Well, either way, three people were deaths bludgeoned. Deaths as a result of Rubik's Cubes. See, that's why you're the journalist. But the fact is that we have people bringing in contraband, bringing mm -hmm. in weapons... And we, we can't have that risk to our less violent offenders when, uh, you know, anytime we have these people that are getting into the wrong cabs, we don't know what their nefarious purposes are for doing this, but we know they're nefarious. And we can't let, let these sociopaths bring down our entire prison system. Well, uh, there you have it, Potter. Security, uh, remains high, uh, here and uh, now I send it back to you. Well, thank you, Paul Pot. Uh, it's quite interesting. I didn't even know where Timor Liest was until recently. Wow, what a story. Well, the next story is brought to us by Wynn contributor Angela of Anchorage, Alaska. The hit TV series House of Cards, starring Kevin Spacey, brings U.S. political motivations into question. To see what's driving President Obama's back-and-forth policy decisions on ISIS, illegal immigration, and the like, let's chat with Wynn senior political war, uh, reporter Tweedledee, who is with stupid American voters on the mall in Washington, D.C. Uh, Tweedledee? Oh, uh, thank you, Potter. I'm here with just masses of average Americans, uh, also known as stupid American voters. Uh, and it's, it's, there's a lot of mass confusion here. Um, people are getting funnel cakes from the various food trucks around, and they don't seem very concerned with the government. Um, now here, uh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Uh, oh, please state your oh, name. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name's, my name's Doug. Uh, Doug, Doug Winthrop? Uh, yeah. What, what, uh, what can I do for you? Mr. Winthrop, thank you. Um, and would you classify yourself as a stupid American voter? Stupid? No, no. I, I uh, do you I'm... vote, sir? No. Oh, oh, okay. So you, uh, you feel no responsibility for the state of the country? Uh, no, that's the government's job. That's, yeah, that's the, the government's supposed to take care of, uh, you know, everything. I mean, I mean, not everything, but more or less. Well, the people are supposed to take care of electing the government. You don't feel that's your responsibility? The people? Uh, I mean, the who American are the people, people Mr. Well, Winthrop? You. I don't trust the American people is the thing. Oh. So... I mean, because, hey, you asked me if I'm a stupid American voter. N no, I'm not, but there are a lot of them. Well, as as we can see. Um, so, uh, sir, what, if, if you acknowledge that there are this many stupid American voters, why not try to turn the tide by actually voting? Well, it's like a tsunami tide. You know, it can't be turned around. I'm, I'm just 
are long for the ride at this point. You know what I mean? It's, I'm just trying to have some funnel cake. So the uh, the the tide of American government is too much for you, and you're you're overwhelmed, and that causes you to not participate, sir. No, I wouldn't say I'm overwhelmed. I just it's like, what am I supposed to do? You know, I, if, I, if the government told me how I could help, then I'd probably consider it. Well, they do tell you to vote. Yeah, but there's got to be something else I could do, you know? I mean, oh. besides being a soldier, too. I don't, I'm not into fight. I'm not a, a violent person. Have you ever considered running for political office, sir? In high school, I ran a... Uh, I was running mate to my buddy Chad. He was running for a uh, secretary. And I was going to be co-secretary. We were kind of our our plan was we were going to take uh certain funds, you know, for like the prom and stuff, and we were going to get a petting zoo. Like a, we were going to try and have like a regular like monthly petting zoo. That but, sounds uh, like an incredible waste of school funds. Well, it was going to be pretty awesome. I mean, petting zoos have been shown to, uh, you know, like science has shown that petting zoos are good for, like, relieving stress and stuff. Hmm. Well, Mr. Winthrop, uh, thank you. Potter, I'm here on the ground with the root of the problem here in America, and I'm going to throw it back to you. Well, thank you, Tweedo D. Let's go right over to the World Sports Desk with Fired Up Frank in an Antarctica at the World Penguin Wrestling Championships. What's going on down there in Antarctica, Fired Up Frank? Oh, it's freezing cold and my eyelids are frozen shut. I can't tell what's happening just based on sound. It's a cacophony of bird screams. Well, thank you, Fired Up. Boy, that sounds like a very interesting competition. And let's go over to the World Weather Station with newly founded Tulip Sung Spring. She's in a Tibetan monastery. What's going on over there, Tulip? Um, right now, um, the head monk is stroking the uh, bowl of harmonic vibrations. And the the idea is that the vibrations will resonate uh, with our hearts and at a certain frequency we will be able to um, access uh, personal harmony so uh, that's I'm trying to just calm the tempest inside of me that is so um, uh, overwhelmed by the uh, political socioeconomic religious psychological anthropological economical climates that are rampaging and tearing people apart and ruining families on earth well thank you tulip and welcome back to the wind world local news and thank you all for tuning in i'm potter smiths good day and stay tuned for community court next on the world in prom network Give the Windcast your suggestions via Facebook, Twitter, or the KZKO Wind Blog during the commercial break of a case that needs to be heard during community court. Next on KZKO. You are listening to Win on KZKO. Check them out every Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Only on KZKO The Vibe.